Hello. Um, yes, I will tell about StackLeak security feature and its long and complicated way to the Linux kernel mainline. My name is Alexander Popov. I'm the Linux kernel developer and security researcher at Positive Technologies. The plan of the talk, first I will give the overview of StackLeak security feature, then describe my role, give the technical details, how does it work, and finally uh, describe this uh, way to the main line, the timeline, uh, current state, and interactions with the Linux and subsystem maintainers. Uh, StackLeak is an awesome security feature originally initially made by uh, Pax team. It comes as Pax memory stack leak in JAR security Pax patch, uh, but unfortunately this patch is not public anymore. Uh, the, la the last public version which we have is for kernel 4.9 from April 2017. And um, I took the goal to introduce stack leak into the Linux kernel mainline. And uh, I want to thank my employer, Positive Technologies. It allows me to spend part of my working time on it. And of course, thank my family because I spent a lot of my free time on it. Um, what did I do? First, I had to extract StackLeak from the JR Security Pax patch, which is really big, uh, more than 20,000, oh, 200,000 lines in it. And uh, I ca carefully learned it bit by bit uh, and um, went the usual uh, loop sent to Linux kernel mailing list, get feedback, improve, repeat. And I'm doing that for more than a year. I've sent 15 versions of the patch series. Um, and it's uh, still in progress. Now about StackLeak security features. What does it provide? Um, first of all, I want to show you this map describing the uh, um, Linux, ker uh, Linux kernel security area. The only thing you, can, you should see on this slide is that you don't see anything because uh, the area is very complex. There are a lot of different kinds of vulnerabilities, exploit techniques, and uh, Linux kernel security features which mitigate them and there are a lot of interconnections. So if you want the details, you can look. Uh, uh, I give the link to the repository. And that is the part of this map uh, about StackLeak. Um, so StackLeak is out of tree defense, which is going to the main line. It is um, inspired by Pax memory StackLeak, and it um, have uh, it interacts with three kinds of kernel vulnerabilities. It is um, stack depth overflow, uninitialized variables attacks, and information exposure. Uh, this uh, links, these arrows on the diagram doesn't mean that StackLeak mitigates those kinds of bugs. It means that there is some interconnection, um, and I will describe it soon. The security feature number one, StackLeak erases the kernel stack at the end of the system call. And that reduces the information which can be leaked by um, kernel stack leak bugs. How does it look? How such bug looks? Uh, we have user space and kernel space and two system calls um, on this diagram. During the first system call, we have some security sensitive data uh, placed at the kernel thread stack. And the second system call has a bug. Uh, we have copied to user with uh, some data not initialized. So this data contain, contains the values which were mm, previously put at the kernel thread stack. And these values are copied to the user space and the attacker now can analyze them. And what does StackLeak do against that? At the end of the system call, we have a StackLeak erase function, which is called, and it erases 
the, uh, the used part of the kernel stack. It writes minus beef um, to the kernel thread stack and overrides the security sensitive data. And later, um, the system call uh, uh, number two, it still has the bug, but the only thing which is copied to the user space is this minus, minus beef. So security sensitive data is not copied anymore. And we have a nice implication from that. Um, Stackleak blocks some uninitialized kernel stack variable attacks. There are nice examples, and I really like the write-up by Case Cook, uh, which describes how to um, exploit such kind of flaw. Uh, this diagram th shows it. Uh, we have now three system calls. On the first system call, the attacker uh, prepares the payload in the user space, this target address, and uh, it is copied, copy from user, um, it is copied to the kernel thread stack. The second system call has a bug in it. Um, we, uh, uh, the payload number two is copied to the address which is not initialized. So it turns into a so-called arbitrary write primitive. And the attacker um, controls the target address uh, with the first system call, and now um, the payload number two, which is prepared by the attacker, is copied to the, user, uh, to the kernel space. And the third system call can be used to trigger the payload and uh, elevate the privileges. So it is a local privilege escalation exploit. And what does this uh, stack leak uh, do to mitigate that? At the end of the first system call, where when that uh, payload number one was copied to the kernel space, it is overwritten by minus beef with, in stack leak arrays function. And then later, uh, the arbitrary write primitive from, uh, which we had previously turned into copying data to minus beef, which points to the unused hole into, in the virtual memory. So it will give a fault and the uh, user space process which called it will be killed. Um, so uh, the uninitialized stack variable attack is mitigated with that. And there is an important limitation. Uh, stack leak doesn't uh, mitigate such attacks which, uh, which, are, which happen during one single system call because the race, uh, stack leak erase function is called at the end of the system call. If the attack is uh, performed before, we can do nothing about that. Now the third security feature. Uh, Stack leak blocks uh, stack clash attack. It is one of um, one kind of stack depth overflow. And if we want the mainline kernel to be defended against stack depth overflow, all kinds which we know right now, we need three security, uh, three config options altogether. It is config thread info in task, which moves the thread info out of the bottom of the kernel st uh, uh, thread stack. Second, we need the map stack function, uh, config option, which adds guard pages around our stack. And finally, we need stack leak, which blocks stack clash attack. Uh, how does it work? The idea of stack clash attack is quite old. It was pub uh, published uh, for the first time at 2005, and then later it was revisited by Qualys research team uh, in 2017. The, uh, um, it um, uses variable length arrays, which were already covered by case today, and um, the, the memory for variable length array is allocated on the, on the stack with a, a locker. And if, we, if the attacker controls the size of the array, uh, it can uh, he can make uh, the kernel allocate a lot of memory and the end of the allocation will jump over the guard page 
and the attacker now can override the neighbor memory, which is next to the kernel thread stack. It can be another process stack or some heap object. So it, uh, it can be used for uh, privilege elevation again. And what does the click do about that? On every, before every alloca call, there is this code um, running. If we have the allocation size big, bigger or equal to the space left, we uh, call panic or bug, depending on our config options, and it is hated by Linux. You may um, guess why. I will cover it a little bit later. Okay, and what is the price? What is the performance impact? Uh, there is the, uh, it is the result of the first performance test, which is quite attractive. We see that building the Linux kernel on one core gives us less than 1% of, performance, uh, of uh, performance penalty. And there is another test which is not so attractive, uh, the Hackbench synthetic test. It runs, um, it starts a lot of uh, threads which um, send short messages to each other, so there are a lot of short system calls. The stack is erased at the end of the each call. And we have more than 4% um, performance penalty. So the conclusion about performance, uh, Staclick performance penalty varies for different workloads. So before deploying in production, first you should evaluate the um, performance impact on your expected workload. And I've added the Staclick metrics feature, which shows how much of the stack space is used for the special process. Um, and then after evaluating the performance penalty, you can decide whether it is fine for your case on your system. Now, before I um, speak about the upstreaming process, um, I should say that Staclick consists of two parts. First is um, the code which erases the used part of the kernel stack at the end of this call. And the second part uh, is the GCC plugin, which is responsible for compile time instrumentation. It uh, does, it is needed for two um, uh, tasks. First, it is needed for tracking the lowest border of the kernel stack, um, because we erase only used part of the kernel stack. So we, n we need to know where, how much of the stack we used during the syscall handling. And second, it adds uh, a locker check, which was hated by Linux and dropped. And uh, now, a long thrilling story of Staclick upstreaming. There, uh, it reminds me of famous Russian painting, uh, The Hunters at Rest. So you can see how they share the experience um, uh, which they had in forests. And it is the same about the kernel developers which share experience about uh, what they encountered in the Linux kernel mailing list. So it is the timeline. Um, it started in April 2017 when JAR Security uh, decided to close their public patches. And in May, I decided, decided to work on Stack Leak. Um, I continued the work, uh, the work which was started by Tycho Anderson and um, sent the first version to the Linux kernel mailing list. And I should say that I was learning Staclick bit by bit. So um, there was a cover letter when I wrote the to-do. So at the first, on the first iteration, I just learned how the uh, stack raising written in assembly language um, works. And I marked in to do that I should learn how GCC plugin works and what, is, what it is used for. 
but suddenly uh, in the middle of June, the stack clash report by Qualys was published and um, JR Security published their um, uh, blog post about uh, stack clash and the Linux kernel and they trolled me uh, and my upstreaming efforts saying that uh, we just copy paste without understanding. Mm, at the same time, I marked uh, in to do that I, I need to learn the GCC plugin. I'm only at the beginning. Anyway, I understood that I'm in the middle of this um, uh, events going on and I should proceed. Uh, on the third version, I learned and uh, documented the GCC plugin, found some bugs in it. Uh, then on the fourth version, I uh, learned uh, the assertions which the click adds in uh, stack tracking and allocate checking, and there were uh, errors in them again. I fixed them. Then I uh, found all the points where the stack should be erased because there are multiple ways uh, from the kernel space to user space at the end of this system call. And I found uh, a point which stack erasing was missed. Uh, and then later um, in December, uh, there was a really short and um, interesting email, something like that, did you see these patches called um, PTY, uh, PTI, page table isolation? Uh, did you try to, re to rebase on them? Uh, so I rebased on PTI, which introduced the trampoline stack, um, some intermediate st uh, stack which is used uh, after, uh, before we go from the kernel space to the user space. And later in January, Meltdown was published. Again, I, I felt that I'm in the middle of this hurricane. It was really impressive. Then some version, uh, during some uh, month, I was ignored. And okay, I thought that I'm ready for upstreaming. Uh, but version nine sadly was burned by Linus. He uh, appeared in the email thread and told um, a lot of um, angry words. <laughs> Um, uh, but anyway, uh, he stated that uh, variable length arrays are bad by default and we should uh, clean up the kernel from them and Case Cook started this uh, movement of VLA cleanup. Uh, there are more than 15 people, I guess, participating and it started by this um, email from Linus. Anyway, uh, I was emotionally dead for several weeks, uh, but then uh, my wife helped me and I decided to extract the technical objection, objections from uh, these uh, angry words. And uh, the main objection was that stack raising is written in assembly language. And uh, so maintainers don't like uh, it because it is quite a lot of assembly and I, des I decided to rewrite it in C. It was not easy because um, it is tricky to make the GCC compiler create you the binary which looks at, uh, similar to handwritten assembly. Anyway, uh, I came up with the next version which was called Stol Stockholm Syndrome patch series. Uh, by Brett Spangler from JR Security. Uh, there were uh, more versions uh, and at version 14 I thought again that I'm really ready for mainline but the pull request for 4.19 was burned by Linux at the second time. Uh, because of this um, bug on in alloca checking and uh, stack erasing. Um, Again, extracted the objections, uh, came up with the next version which avoids it. Um, 
and it was called uh, version 15 Sisyphus edition, quite funny again. Um, let's see what will happen. It is not taken, it is, uh, their pull request is not merged uh, for, uh, for this release. And uh, now what, is, what are the changes from the original version? Uh, how's the, uh, how my patch series differs from the original JR security patch? Uh, first of all, the, there are bugs fixed in original StackLeak GCC plugin. Uh, the assertion in stack tracking and lock checks were wrong, and I have fixed them. And as I said, uh, there were points of stack erasing missing. So stack uh, was not erased in some cases. There are... Uh, there is plenty of refactoring which was done. I extracted the common part uh, for easy porting to new platforms, and it includes uh, rewriting the stack raising in C, which was tricky. Um, but it allowed um, easy porting to ARM64, which is done by Laura Abbott, thanks to her. I got rid of hard-coded magic numbers, documented the code, so I prepared the patch series for the main line because the initial version uh, is far from the uh, usual requirements. And it is uh, the same about the code style. And what is new functionality which was introduced? This um, uh, trampoline stack support, which comes um, during page table as isolation. The nice tests, which we wrote together with Taiho Anderson, uh, ARM64 support, which I already mentioned, and GCC8 support. Um, GCC8 was released during uh, my um, StackLeak upstreaming efforts, so we added uh, the support for this new version. And the new functionality, which was requested by Inga Molnar, this technique metrics, which allows you to see how much um, of stack space is used during the current and previous system call for some process. And this stack leak runtime disable option, which I don't like really, because runtime disabling of um, security features, um, I don't like it. But uh, Inga Molnar foiled, forced me, so I added this syscontrol under the config option, which is initially, which is disabled by default. So it is some kind of compromise which we found. And dropped functionality. Uh, as I said, the, the assertions in stack tracking were wrong. I dropped that, them. And um, the first thing which triggered uh, Linux was stack erasing after ptrace, comp, and auditing, which happens at the beginning of the system call. So when Linus uh, saw it, he, and he felt something bad and decided to burn it all. <laughs> and uh, the locker checking is dropped um, because uh, bagon is now prohibited uh, in the patches which come from the security developers. Uh, but anyway, the variable length arrays will be removed, uh, and after they are completely removed, there will be a global uh, WVLA flag. Uh, at the same time, I think that uh, a local check would be good uh, for the code which is not upstreamed. So, um, but it is the only way how we can get to the main line, dropping this, so let's see what will happen with the 15th version. And um, as I said, when Stack Clash was published, Brad Spengler uh, said that um, we just copy and paste the, uh, the JR security code without understanding, but I'm sure it is not applicable to Stack Leak upstreaming efforts. And a few words um, about um, what is burned by Linux. So it is strong language, even swearing, and there are examples I don't quote. Uh, 
Um, technical objections are mixed with them, so you should put off your emotions and just try to extract what he means. And he gives knock without looking at patches, and it is difficult to, uh, to handle that. So, um, sometimes he simply, simply ignores, and it makes me th think that uh, he is by default irritated by kernel hardening initiatives, maybe. But anyway, I love Linux, but all of that um, kills my motivation. Let's see what will happen with StackLeak. Um, if uh, Linux will not merge it, uh, really my work will be uh, Sisyphus work. But if uh, StackLeak will finally find the way to the main line, it will survive like a phoenix through several flames. <laughs> uh, and closing thoughts. Uh, we are the Linux kernel community, and we are responsible for all those machines which run our favorite operating system. And if we put more effort to Linux kernel security, we will definitely not be ignored. Thank you very much. Uh, so I wanted to ask about writing stack erasing in C. So more or less, how is it done? Because C doesn't give you uh, direct access to registers like stack pointers. So how do you uh, do stack erasing without accessing the registers or how do you access directly registers through C? Uh, first of all, there is a helper, um, current top of stack in the Linux kernels. So it is not a problem. Uh, the main problem was, uh, w was connected with, um, with local variables which reside on, uh, which should reside in registers, but not on the th on the stack because we are erasing uh, erasing the stack, and uh, it is the assumption which we make about the compiler that uh, this function has, um, as I remember, four local variables and they are um, uh, put, uh, th they are uh, the residing registers. Then another assumption was that during the raising, the stack pointer doesn't change. It was uh, another assumption which, uh, which we just have. Um, but at the same time, this um, trampoline stack it makes things easier because uh, when we switch to trampoline stack and then uh, we can erase the thread stack not from the bottom, uh, not from the lowest stack to stack pointer, but to the top of the stack because we are at the separate stack right now. So it makes things easier. But uh, there are cases when we erase stack uh, being on it at the same time. So now uh, stack erasing supports both ways uh, of work. And um, another uh, complicated thing was that GCC likes to optimize, and um, when, when the erasing um, is performed, first we need to find the poison and then start from the poison. It looks like that. Um, so there is a lowest stack, and uh, first of all, we need to find uh, 17 poison values on the, on the stack. And after we found it, we just go and write minus beef between the found point and thread stack top. And um, What did I want to say? So, uh, yes, and um, and uh, as you see, we don't erase the whole stack, 
when uh, I did some performance evaluation, if I raise the whole stack, it will give you a 40% of perform performance penalty. And we erase only the used part of the kernel stack, and it makes it uh, so fast that uh, on the uh, building the Linux kernel, we have only less than 1% of uh, performance penalty. So, um, ah, and I want to say that um, the GCC wants to optimize this, this searching, and um, when we come to the thread stack bottom on the first raising, uh, it, ha it touched the guard page below the stack because the optimization um, loop was so that it read the next value below the uh, stack, stack bottom and crushed the kernel. So I had to um, play with GCC um, to avoid this optimization and uh, make, it, make the uh, binary similar to initial assembly language uh, version. Thanks for the question. Yes? Uh, so some of us would actually like the bug on version of the patch. Um, maybe we can have a discussion afterwards about how to convince uh, Linus that some of us want that feature. I think first we should um, convince him to have stack leak uh, even without bug on. So if we have it in the main line, then we can discuss f further work. There are uh, uh, several ideas what can, what can be done further. Um, th so there is an, uh, th there are more points where we can raise the kernel st uh, stack. And, but I think we can go with small steps and first uh, we should have this uh, success story of getting the sec this security feature in the main line and, and then go to further goals. We might need to introduce a security bug on version. Let's see if, because bug on's banned. Um, I have that in the kernel. It's used in two places. I am completely terrified of pointing it out to Linus at this point. So I'd like maybe to do that. In the meantime, people can set a panic on warn um, as the workaround. And that's not the first time that somebody's changed the name of something to get it up to Linus. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember any of the others, I don't ask. Okay, any more questions? Have you tried to compile this, your C routine using Silang? Uh, uh, no. Um, first of all, this, uh, uh, this has this GCC plugin, which is, um, uh, works only with GCC, and um, the stack erasing without it will give you a big performance penalty. So I just didn't try to do anything with Clang because I depend on this GCC plugin. But uh, there is a plugin infrastructure in Clang as well. So if it will work for GCC version, we, we can do the same with Clang. Okay, um, thanks for all your effort in. Thank you. Thank you with all this. <laughs>